It, it, the point here is, yes, we need to take that seriously. So um, we're in much better shape than many places in the world, nearly all the places in the world, actually, because we did the right thing so far here in Ontario. But we're not out of the woods yet. Why is that? First of all, what we need just to be aware of, all those people who remain unvaccinated are at extremely high risk of uh, getting infected. And if you're a bit, you know, middle aged or so or older, this means you have a relatively high risk of ending up on an ICU. So all those unvaccinated people out there. Uh, will still be able actually to overwhelm our ICUs and that's what we see in these projections. So what do we need to do? First of all, the steps taken right now are all the right ones. Here in Ontario, we never exited, you know, step three of this reopening framework we had. So we didn't uh, pretend everything is hunky dory. It's not anyway. And now we start to have also in this province, like in many other provinces, a tool at our disposition, the vaccine certificates, which will help us to deal with the high risk scenarios. And the point really is we know that from many studies out there, especially, you know, studies that use mobility data to uh, understand where um, the infections actually are happening. An indoor dining or gym, etc. That's really the settings where this is happening. And if we now can restrict uh, these settings to people who are fully vaccinated, it will not only help case keeping cases under control, but it will also keep those who are not fully vaccinated out of trouble, so they don't end up that easily and that early on our ICUs. That's what we need. I know you're on board with the vaccine passport. Do you think it goes far enough, Dr. Uni? Oh, again, you know, I have an international lens and I look everywhere else. I think we're really well underway. It focuses right now on the highest risk settings. And we know that really well, which ones these are. And we also need to be aware of that, you know, that we uh, can deal with this from, from an ethical perspective. Also much better if we talk about discretionary spaces for patrons. It's much more difficult to, uh, you know, impose something for staff. And it's much more difficult when you then start to think about other spaces. So what is done right now here in the province of Ontario is an absolutely great first step. We will see how it goes. There might be adaptations needed, but it's great that we have the tool now. I want to ask you specifically about that possibility, the worst case scenario of 9,000 cases a day in October. Given our high vaccination rates, why would we see a number that high? Um, I think there's some concern that for those who are not vaccinated, they can point to this and say, well, you know what, you're still going to get the virus, whether you're vaccinated or not. Here's the evidence. Why should I go out and get it? Dr. Hume is... Oh, oh, there we go. Sorry, I'm back now. Something... Hello? Hi. Gotcha. Go ahead. Do you have me back? We have you back. I don't know what's happening here this morning. It's a bit <laughs> troublesome. Okay, so the point is, um, without the vaccines, things would look considerably worse. That's really important just to realize. This virus is so transmissible that without vaccines, and you see that even in New Zealand right now, you know, they, they always try to come with zero, it's not working out. They really struggle to keep Delta under control. Without our vaccine coverage that we had, things would look 10 times worse. And the point now is vaccine plus Delta is a bit comparable to the lame variant we had last year in August. Uh, and uh, uh, and no vaccines yet. So what we just need to do is just uh, keep the coverage going up and up, and then we will get better. There's no way for those who are not vaccinated that they don't get infected. Their risk of getting infected during the next six to 12 months is above 90%. Okay, I know we have some gremlins today to deal with, but I want to squeeze in another question, and that is, how can we prevent another lockdown? Do you feel that that is something that is within our control or is it inevitable? 
No, it's absolutely within our control. We need some restrictions. And the first thing is now we have the vaccine certificates. That's great. We need to continue masking, social distancing, etc. We might see that there will be some high risk settings that we need to restrict again more. But we don't talk about the renewed lockdown. I think you can really do that without uh, without another lockdown. What we had, for instance, in when was it in uh, in April or so? I don't think this will happen, but it will all depend on us. We need to be careful and think about, okay, what's the risk I want to take and decrease this risk so that we don't contribute to the pandemic. Dr. Uni, thank you so much and appreciate you rolling with the punches this morning. We'll talk to you again soon. <laughs> Sounds good. Bye-bye.